going back to what we were talking about before in terms of exactly what was causing Jet's autism, but his seizures, mm -hmm. at what age did he start having those? He started having those around, we feel like they were very mild prior to this. It was after about two years old, mm -hmm. year and a half to two after the Kawasaki's and after all of those different things. But around six or seven was when he did. But there are also things in our foods that I believe are triggers for seizures. And so little is known about seizures, but I did so much research. And there are different food additives, food dyes, uh, the colors, artificial ingredients, artificial sweeteners. Did you notice a different difference in Jet's seizures, whether they were fewer and farther between or more mild or maybe more severe if, I don't know, maybe he'd been with some, someone else who wasn't watching, wasn't watching was over him and what he was, was doing as vigilantly as you? Did you notice a pattern there? Absolutely, but they were also sort of cumulative as well. So you have several of those things that could lead to something. And we were on seizure medication for years, but a lot of times they don't work. You know, or there's mm -hmm. breakthroughs, or, or and they're so sick. unhappy or sad or sluggish, and they can affect you so poorly. So we would try all different things, and I felt like when we were able to keep certain things, uh, you know, at a bare minimum and do as healthy as possible, he did so much better. He mm -hmm. was coming out of the autism. He really was. I know there's a lot of talk on gluten and casein-free and, and different things like that. There were so many things that we did. There were so many things that we did to help him, and so many doctors from, we traveled all over the world. Yeah, well, I, I have several of my autistic patients do better, you know, on the gluten casein-free mm -hmm. diet. Now, I'm, were you, it sounds like you were one of those parents that I have a lot of in my practice with kids with autism that are just hypervigilant about mm. what their kids are exposed to and what they're uh, eating and, and their medications and treatments and keeping extremely good being very organized about what, mm. what's working, what's, what's not working, and, and you know, how, was that a challenge for you to, to kind of try to organize his, everything around him? It, it was, but it, it was also easy because you're doing it so much from the heart and everybody was on board in our family and uh, it's so important and we realized the results of it. We tried not to go so crazy overboard too because you don't want them to live in a, a tight, controlled environment either. You know, it was something where you had to have a balance with it. But I think if you provide them with really healthy, uh, nutrient-dense, great food, great supplements and vitamins and things, and try to avoid those other things, that uh, the results were amazing. And in the end, I'm sitting before you and I, I see a mother who is passionate about whether it's finding a cure or figuring mm. out what it is out there that harmed your son. And I think that's something that anyone watching at home can agree with. This is something we need to spend more money, more time researching, figuring out what in the world is out there that could be potentially triggering these increased rates of autism.